Welcome to Investors Insights. Our topic today is, is everything okay in the USA? Question mark. We chose that topic because of the calls and interaction we're having with clients as we continue to receive so much news about everything that's going on in the world. I'm happy to tell you that this morning I had a great meeting with my colleagues, Bobby Norman, Trey Booth, and Ty Miller. And in that meeting, I thought both of them brought some great insight in relation to your financial blueprint, as well as your portfolio and what's going on in the economy. We like to say that you you need to track all the details, not just the headlines. So with that, Trey, I'm going to go to you first. And the reason is, is that the big news on Friday, of course, the market dropped down. Uh, Rumors are going in all directions about the Fed possibly raising interest rates, which we believe is going to happen. But then the debate and emotion starts about how many times will the Fed raise rates and what kind of havoc can that cause on somebody's portfolio or the decisions they make financially. So with that, share the information and chart that you shared with, with us this morning. Yeah, thanks, Greg. So last week, we actually seemed to be having a a bit of a rally, even through midday Thursday, the market was up. But then Chairperson Powell spoke in public comments and came out a little more hawkish and a little more aggressive than the markets anticipated. So rate, the the expectation for rate hikes went went up considerably. You can see on this chart that the market is now expecting 10 rate hikes this calendar year. That would take the federal funds rate from zero to effectively 2.5%. And a little back envelope math will tell you that that, that there's only six Fed funds meetings remaining this year. So that means the Fed has to raise rates by more than 25 basis points if it's to match market expectations. That doesn't sound like a big deal, uh, moving from 25 basis points to maybe 50 basis points. But the Fed hasn't raised rates by 50 basis points in over 20 years. So it's something the market, we don't really have a lot of recent history of how the market will react to that. Uh, and, and, and you can look at this chart, the number of times the Fed ro- raised rates by more than 25 base points. If you go back in time, it looks like it's much more common. It's really the last 20 years that's uncommon where the Fed moves in 25 base points increments. So we're, we're, the market definitely on the, on the close of the week and the start of this week got really concerned about a potentially 50 or 75 base point rate hike. But look back on this chart to March of 1980, where the Federal Reserve raised rates by 5% in one meeting. And so there's definitely been precedent where the market, when it's fighting inflation in the Fed, has really had to come out much stronger than we currently anticipate. So while it may be higher than expectations initially, it's not nearly as bad as it's been in the past and something that we all were able to absorb. So it's something to watch closely as we go into the Fed's meeting first week of May. Trey, that's great information, very insightful, and uh, hopefully our viewers will feel some calm in in understanding the rate hikes from a historical standpoint, and also that as we navigate through these markets, we're going to keep a close eye on it. I also want to emphasize that on our social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, our podcast, I would encourage you to to watch it even more as the, the weeks progress, because we're going to continue to give you information that will keep you updated, not only about the Fed rate hikes, but other things going on in the economy and the market. And one in particular that we're really focused on, Bobby Norman did a great report this morning. And Bobby, detailed research, which I appreciate regarding China. So we got you know the whole issue with Fed rate hikes, but then talk about China and what's going on there. Yeah, while the world is still focused on the situation in Ukraine, our focus has turned to China. And it's one of the biggest risks to the global economy that probably is it getting the attention that it needs to have? And so as you can see in this chart, COVID cases have jumped significantly. And we're seeing that nearly 400 million people across 45 cities in China are under a full or partial lockdown. And that's due to China's zero COVID policy. That's important. That represents 40% of GDP for the world's second largest economy. So it also significantly impacts over 600 companies in China, with many of those being manufacturing companies. So Our concern is that the supply chain will be severely impacted by this new shutdown. In fact, the world's busiest port, Port of Shanghai, is being severely impacted. And we're seeing reports that the number of vessels waiting to load or discharge has skyrocketed to a record high. We're also seeing reports that more than 90 percent of trucks supporting the import and export deliveries are at a complete standstill. So this is a big deal. 
uh, as the global economy is already on shaky ground with the conflict in Ukraine and high inflation. So it's something that, that uh, we're focusing more and more on uh, because it's a big deal. Well, and, and, and Bobby, let me say thank you for, for putting that together. It's also why we chose the topic, is everything okay in the USA? Uh, I'll challenge you here because you've done some good reports as well and research about corporate earnings. We're still seeing corporate earnings in this country doing extremely well, correct? Yeah, we're still seeing over 70% of corporations uh, beat ex- earnings expectations. So yeah, corporate earnings are still looking strong. Yeah, so in, in, in terms of the USA, we're still seeing a lot of strain, but we also watch closely the rippling effect of things that are happening globally and seeing if it can eventually slow up this economy. And so, folks, we want to emphasize to you that as you, you watch the news media, there's a lot of global geopolitical things happening out there. But in this country, even with rate hikes taking place, we're still seeing a lot of positives. And so we're going to be tracking both of them and be prepared to move accordingly. Now, that said, Ty, you gave us a lot of positive comments this morning on kind of behind the scenes of this economy, things that really aren't being reported that much. So talk about the consumer in relation to the good old USA economy. Yeah, yeah. So the the, the consumer makes up 70 percent of GDP here in the U.S. and the consumer is still strong. Um, it, with, with 11 million job openings, it's going to be hard to get too bearish on consumer spending or corporate profits. It's a matter of when, not if, that these jobs get filled. And at the same time, in a couple of more positive charts, as you see here, the, the consumer is making more money. Um, even though energy prices are up, it's making a less, uh, lesser percentage of disposable income for the consumer uh, here in the U.S. And that's uh, along the lines of revolving credit is back to pre-pandemic levels. However, um, the percentage of credit card debt uh, compared to disposable income is down below its historic average of 5%. We're sitting at 4.7%. So the U.S. consumer is still very strong, and it's going to be hard to get you know, too bearish um, for, for a long time as long as the U.S. consumer stays like this. Well, and, and see, I really appreciate uh, the research that was done. I was, I was blown away because, folks, we do a lot more behind the scenes than you can imagine in the discussions, we narrow it down on what to share in this vlog as quickly as possible. But, you know, we're seeing a lot of positives and, you know, in talking with our clients, some of them will go, oh, the world is, is really got some horrible things going on and it does. But in terms of the USA, in terms of our economy, there's a lot of positive things taking place. And so we're watching to see how these offset each other as we continue to move into the month of May. Again, watch our social media, continue watching our vlogs, watch previous vlogs. Those of you that are forwarding it to family, friends, colleagues at work, uh, other clients, uh, those of you that are professionals, we can't thank you enough. We want to provide information that makes a difference in people's lives, that makes people's lives better, richer, fuller. And that is the tagline here at Five Plan Partners. It's also what we do every day and believe in strongly. We hope you have a great week. Call if you get concerned, have questions, and we're going to be following up with you. Thanks.